We have allowed the rampagings of a political economic system that does not care for people who sit in this room. This means that each one of us, each one of us individually and in groups must pressure Congress, must pressure the new president and say, we will not take this. Akwan McElrath was one of the most important leaders in Hawaii's history. Her life story is part of the heroic struggle of those who fought to gain social and economic justice for the working people of Hawaii. Akwan, fondly known as AQ, was born in 1915 to immigrant Chinese parents. The poverty of her early years formed her politics, her work ethic, her compassion, and her dedication to improving the lives of others. Despite severe financial hardship, she was able to graduate with a degree in social work from the University of Hawaii in 1938. For decades, Hawaii's economic and political life were ruled by a handful of companies known as the Big Five. These business owners worked together to exploit working class people, low wages, long hours, poor working conditions, and no representation left working families oppressed with little or no hope for the future. We were treated like slaves. White men ruled. Oh man, now we have slave pay. The first job I had, I had only about $1.25 a day. The attitude of the sugar planters towards the various ethnic groups whom they had imported to work on the sugar plantations uh, was not all that altruistic, that they looked upon them, for example, as cattle. They looked upon them as jute bags. As a young woman, Aquan recognized that unions could provide a vehicle for social change, that by uniting and working together, people of all ethnicities could transform their lives. She joined forces with a group of strong labor activists and threw herself into union support and organizing with the ILWU, the International Longshore and Warehouse Union. The bigger picture was that working people deserved to take control over their lives and to have something to say about the direction of Hawaii. Because the message that was brought to union organization was not just an economic message. It was a political message. It was a social message based on one interracial harmony based on one big industrial organization that organized everybody in one union without regard to job classification, without regard to religion, without regard to race or any other classification that you might want to use to separate human beings. To prevent fraternization and mutual understanding, plantation managers divided workers into ethnic camps, making it easier to pit one group against another. The union brought together all ethnic groups. We used to have speeches in Ilocano, in Visayan, in Japanese, in pure English, and in Pidgin English. That was so that everybody would understand exactly what was going on and could say what he wanted to say. It is the awakening, as it were, of all of the workers' feelings about themselves, their families, their jobs. And to me, this is the story of the awakening of the human spirit through a group called a union. And that's what had happened, and that's what made the union really good, united. Because then all the races were united, especially after our strike in 19. 46, that when all the Japanese, the Portuguese, Hawaiian, and all the Philippines strike together and we had united ourselves and we had a good understanding after the strike is over. 
In her work as a social worker and educator for the ILWU, she became essential to both the rank and file and union leadership. Akwan emerged as a passionate and fearless labor leader, unafraid to challenge the establishment or the male-dominated leadership of the union. She and her colleagues became a voice for working men and women, the embodiment of the spirit of strength and determination that empowered the lives of thousands of workers on the docks, in the fields, in factories, and in hotels. I'd like to tell the young ones that if they're a worker, and as long as you don't have representation, you cannot fight your problem alone. No way. Aquan retired from the ILWU in 1981. She spent the next 28 years as a community advocate and grassroots organizer, leading struggles for health care, affordable housing, human rights, press freedom, death with dignity, and the rights of elders. Her leadership skills and commitment to provide access to education led to an appointment as a regent for the University of Hawaii. People who see the reality and have a passion which is built on compassion can't sit on the sidelines. And so that's when we get down to the strength of personal character, the willingness to keep living that life because the struggle never ends. And there is absolutely no way in which there can be any improvement made in our lives until everyone in this room will go on out and recruit another person so that in fact that which promoted the labor movement years ago with the dream of a world with peace, a world without war, will not occur unless we go on out and act to work with one other person and say, will you work with me?